the accusation from the president of the DRC, particularly during his campaign, where he even indicated that uh, he's uh, willing to fight Rwanda. You are being accused of uh, supporting the M23 right. rebels. Mm -hmm. And this has led to people saying this is causing instability in another country. What is your reaction to the critics who are saying you are behind M23 rebels? Yeah, I, I can also contextualize that for you and uh, tell you what the problem is. Well, in fact, the president of the RSC did not just say he is willing to fight Rwanda. No, he actually said he is going to fight Rwanda and his aim is even to bring regime change. And by the way, started inviting these critics we talked about earlier, <laughs> whichever way. Even they went to Kinshasa, they have met, the whole thing was for him, he's trying to organize them, fund them, and support them to remove the government of Rwanda. That, that's one. So it is, and it is him, sir, he himself is out in the open saying it, even on camera. It's not a rumor, it's not anything. He has said it repeatedly and to everybody, for everybody to hear. Well, we, you don't want to dismiss anything, but on one hand, we want to not take it seriously. There's, he must be having issues that uh, make him do or say that. But, but that's not a compliment. Mm -hmm. There are serious issues, maybe. But on the other hand, we don't want to take anything. Maybe he actually, and especially when we started, we started seeing that he was organizing people and bringing them to Kinshasa, and uh, that he has armed the FDRR. You, you, you know the FDRR? These are. I know the FDRR. The yes. He has armed them, given them everything they wanted. So he's using them to fight uh, his wars against M23, against any other person he wishes to, to fight. So that starts becoming serious. We have had that serious problem of FDR living in the DRC even before he became president. That's a different issue, but when he became the president, now he has openly and officially been associated with them and supporting them and the aim is to cause problems here in Rwanda and along the lines of their is. And in fact, the fact that he embraces FDR uh, shows something else. And that is, uh, and then alongside that, he has mobilized some countries, especially, I will not hesitate to mention, for example, if you see Burundi, the way it is involved in the uh, DRC and in the fight alongside the, the forces of Congo against the M23, it has this connotation of uh, the history of genocide and the politics along ethnic lines and uh, discrimination and even the persecution and so on and so forth. So that's when we start seeing it as being very serious in, in as far as we are concerned. But also, if you look at the story of M23, before I answer the accusation that we support M23, people need to understand who that M23 are. It's not me to define them or talk about who they are. 
let even independent people try and do that, and some of them have done it, as I have seen. M20, by the, including that I asked President Sekedi face to face whether he recognizes M23 as Congolese or these are people who came from somewhere else including Rwanda and just found themselves in, 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 in illegally in Congo. He, his answer to me and in the presence of other leaders was that he recognizes these as Congolese. I'm just repeating it uh, for record. He himself says these are Congolese. I said, fine. It, it was important for him to clarify that. Then, so if he says that these are Congolese himself. Why can't he resolve the problems of his people, of his country, and when he's a leader? It doesn't matter how he becomes a leader, whether the first or the second. That's not my business to judge. I'm not going into that. But uh, there are questions uh, that you, uh, maybe the world can also pay attention to. So if you have, if I had problems here with my people, a section of people, whichever demands they are making, why would they not find a way of resolving that? We started by talking about it, you know, whether genocide could have been prevented, whether there was a way. So why wouldn't Chisekedi find it in himself? Even uh, uh, after accidentally becoming the leader of his country and later on forcing himself to be there, why can't he find it in himself to address the problems of his people? The M23 we are talking about is not just uh, 1,000, 2,000 or 3,000 or whatever number with the arms fighting we have a hundred thousand people here who are in their category and their family members and so on who have been uprooted from Eastern Congo and are staying here in Rwanda in the camp for the last, in the camps, refugee camps for the last 23 years. This so, is where leadership comes from. Yes. Can't the two leaders, the president of Rwanda and the president of the DRC, find a permanent solution so that these two nations can live side by side and yes, we can. you can push for the development of this I beautiful mean, that region? That is a very ideal. It's a simple logic. What you're saying is a simple logic. Until you start asking yourself that question now. So for, for the case of Rwanda, for example, what would anyone ask me to do for that problem to be addressed? Are you willing to engage in talks? We've been doing that. In fact, when I asked him this question, we were already in Nairobi, we were in Kenya, having this discussion with the leaders. So we've been going back and forth. Recently, I was in Angola, in Rwanda. Yes. Over the same thing. Uh, because there are processes, there are processes in, in, in Nairobi, there is a process in uh, Luanda. Luanda. I've been to these places like, uh, I don't know, a dozen times. Over the same issue. But, if you have, uh, like you asked me, we can, see, can we sit? Yes, we can sit and talk about what. But if you, th you have also, the, either you have listened to me or you have listened to President Sekedi. But if you find somebody who admitted in the meeting that yes, these are Congolese, how then 
at the end of the day also start saying, I will not talk to these people, I will not do this, I will not do that. I mean, what? And uh, uh, for me, I'm even using things that are said in the open by the person himself. I'm not creating any story for him. Or, according to him, he thinks M23 is not a problem, that it is Rwanda. And then we ask him, okay, tell, tell me, how is the problem, how, is, how, how, how is the, does the problem become Rwanda? And if so, what are you asking Rwanda to do? Instead, Rwanda actually has a lot to ask. We're asking you, first of all, why do we have these 100,000 people here as refugees? Second, why are you having the M23? But, but the M23 didn't come the other day. I think the war started in the, the fighting started in 2022. But that's not the first time. This problem was there 2012. If you remember, the problem of M23 was born around 2012 because of the same history. This persecution, this, this, uh, and we even went into facts of history. We said, how did these people who are attributed to being Rwandans come to be in the Congo? Is it Rwanda that took them there? These areas of Eastern Congo, Masisi, around Ruchuro, wherever, they have been these people, they have uh, their ancestral homes there. These are people, they were not, if you were to blame anybody, maybe you would blame uh, colonialists. They're the ones more responsible for that. They, they very t <laughs> During those years, we are, ourselves becoming refugees, <laughs> Some of those things were already established and they only turned into problems much later. So we have, we have Rwanda is just being talked about for the sake of again hiding behind this. If you have a leader of a country who refuses to address his own problems and blames people of other countries for being responsible for that prob those problems, then you know the leader has issues to deal with about himself. So, I want to repeat it. M23 was not created by Rwanda. It's not, it's a bigger issue for Congo than for Rwanda. They are associated with a hundred thousand, by then there are more than that in Uganda. In the neighboring Uganda, there are more people there as refugees from Congo. So if you have a leader in Congo who doesn't want to address his problems, but thinks other people should have, uh, should come to resolve his problems, and, and that's why, by the way, he creates M23, he has problems, then he asks, he goes around the countries asking them, to, and he say he keeps saying he's not going to talk to M23, he's going to fight M23. And then he goes to countries to ask them to come and do the fighting for him. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, in, in, the, in, in, the, in Nairobi, that's why East Africa decided they should go, in, they should help the DRC. And we all agreed that that should happen to support the DRC, to bring peace, and so on and so forth. But to bring peace in the DRC was not to fight and accept those, the, the, I will come to like, explain that, there are those who should be fought. But instead they are not the ones being fought, but the ones being fought are the ones actually who have a problem that needs to be addressed. So the East African Community Center Force and the force was to stand in between the fighting forces so that a political process resolves the problem. But over time, the president of Congo decided, since this force is not here to fight M23, for me, that is the way I see it, 
then I want them out. When he was chasing them, he was already in uh, Sadek, Sadek, asking Sadek to come and replace him to, uh, the East African forces. And Sadek came. So this problem, even now that it has not been answered, between East African forces and Sadek forces, who was supposed to do what? Or why couldn't they even talk to each other to understand so that they help this country? But the way it happened was as if the East African forces should not be there. They are not doing what Sekid wants. Therefore, Sadek should move in and actually do what Chiseked wants. But now, between these two positions, what is the meaning? Or what is going to be the solution? How, how, how is peace going to come about when even these regions don't seem to work together, work together or speak the same language? How? And I'm really asking this question again. Why couldn't there be, have been minimum, even a conversation to understand each other, so that if one was do, making a mistake, maybe they could correct it, if the other, but they complement each other. This is, if people wanted peace, this is what should have happened. So maybe people don't want peace. And then finally on this, the, and, and this is unlike uh, some of the countries we know. What is happening in Congo, in Eastern Congo? Let me summarize it. I mentioned to you FDRRA that has been armed, that fights alongside, and sometimes integrated government forces. Government forces. In the DRC. In the DRC. That is one. Two, uh, and by the way, before I leave that, the forces of DRC, the FDRR, are being used by government to persecute a section of the population in Eastern Congo. That's why you have these refugees I was talking about. That's why you have M23 which started even that 2012, that's how it started. So it was never addressed for it to come back 10 years after. Now, does any of these forces, whether East African or from Sadek, want to be on the side of the country, the RSC, that kills its own people, that persecutes its own people, does it want to be on the side of a country that has reorganized FDRR and so on that was responsible for the genocide here in Rwanda? I, I don't think any of these countries in SADC should be finding any reason or have even uh, any excuse to find themselves on that side. It just doesn't make sense. It's unlike South Africa, it's unlike Malawi, it's unlike uh, Tanzania. But, well, I'm sure about South Africa and Tanzania, the others I don't know, I'm not sure. But it's unlike them. And that's why the East African community went to send forces there. They went there saying theirs is not to go and take sides and fight this and that, but they will fight for peace, meaning 
in the imposition of the ceasefire which they had succeeded in doing f for some time, if any one of these groups fighting violated that and for them they don't want peace, they want to continue fighting, that is the one they would take on. I thought that was an honorable position. But somehow Chisekid one day woke up and said, no, I don't want East African forces here. I have Sadak to come and do now. In the recent cases, we had, we had people, I don't know how Sadak would love to be associated with that, that you are bombarding places indiscriminately and some of the t times ordinary people are being killed just because you are there to do the fighting for somebody in DRC who has refused to work for his own people and bring peace. I don't know how they are going to live with that, honestly. 